how about a nice bluish green color like cyan and we'll come down here and say right around 500 nanometers this is where the curve crosses we draw the line over it looks like the blue green color the efficiency is about 0 0.4 so you take 685 multiply it by 0 0.4 and you'd get an idea of how many lumens there were at one water of different colors. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, it gets even more complicated than this because um, one candela, which is given in terms of CD, that's the abbreviation for it, is one lumen per steradian. And remember, steradian is a unit of solid angle, and so we're going to have to know. Uh, how focused or sort of the angle our LED emits into to figure any of this stuff out at all. Okay, well this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're given for most LEDs theta, the angle it emits at, and so we can calculate fairly easily the area of illumination right here. And if we take this distance D and set it equal to 1, um, just some arbitrary unit, we know the radius of this circle is going to be given by d tan theta, where we set that equal to 1. And so r is equal to tan theta. The area, of course, is pi r squared, or pi tangent of theta squared. And so that's the area that we're illuminated. We know that there are 4 pi stair radians in a circle of unit radius r equal 1 or d equal 1 up here. And so basically what we have is we have pi tangent squared theta over 4 pi, or 4 pi's will cancel out, and 1 quarter tangent squared theta will convert essentially the candelas into lumens. So let's say we have x candelas um, for an LED with an angle of emission theta, and we're given those things from the data sheet on the LED. Uh, basically, what we're going to have to do is we're going to try to convert that into watts. Um, so first thing we need to do is to um, convert our candelas into lumens by multiplying by the stair radians. And so we take our value of x that we're given and multiply it by one-fourth tangent squared theta, and that gives us our value in lumens. And then we look up the color of the LED, and let's say we've got a blue LED at, at, at uh, 450 nanometers. So I'm going to come over here and grab a blue pen, and say here's our 450. We come over here. Oh gosh, this is a pretty inefficient LED, and I'm going to say from that curve at 450 nanometers, the spectral luminous efficiency is 0.1. And so what that means is for blue light, there are 68.5 lumens per watt. Okay? Well, I know that the value I just calculated above is lumens. So let's go ahead and, and do that in terms of lumens. And so if I want to convert this into watts, I need to take this value of my LED and divide it by 68.5 lumens per watt at, okay, let's go over here, and remember that this calculation is only good at 450 nanometers. And this is how I take the value of the LED in the data sheet given in terms of candela with an emission angle theta. So here's your LED and you're emitting into some angle theta here, and I convert that into watts. So there's an example of that calculation. Let's take one more look at some of the spatial effects of LEDs really quickly before the lecture's over. Um, if you examine a, a, a light emitting diode and you look at what's available, you, you'll see that you can get LEDs emitting from 6 degrees out to like 120 degrees angle or even more than that. And so there's a really wide range of various angle emissions. All these LEDs are pretty much constructed the same way, that they have a fairly small, um, they have a fairly small, let's do this here, uh, on the order of one millimeter squared 
uh, semiconductor device encapsulated inside a clear or translucent uh, epoxy uh, coating that acts like a lens. So essentially what you've got, we come over here and I'll go to black ink, is you've got a very small region, about one millimeter on a side, give or take, that's encapsulated inside this rather large uh, lens-like material. Let me do a better job drawing this. And of course what's going to happen is that the uh, the epoxy material, being a transparent high-index material, essentially is going to apply Snell's law, and this thing's going to act like a lens. And so the rays of light that are emitted by this LED, in fact, get bent by this, and the curvature and the distance of the emitting source um, from the surface of the epoxy determines how the LED behaves. What does this mean for designing systems with LEDs? Well, it means, in fact, you have to have a fair amount of information if of the encapsulation package of the LED if you want to do ray tracing calculations. And this actually can make LEDs rather difficult to work with as far as what we really care about, which is uh, basically starting with a small point source of light, collecting a lot of that light, and getting it down to another point source. LEDs are notoriously difficult to focus down to small spots because of the effects of the encapsulation package. And we'll look at this more in class. So there's a brief overview of LEDs, how they work, how you forward bias them, how the color, uh, the forward bias voltage depends on the color, and a little bit about uh, converting between the units of millicandelas into watts, which are the more common units we prefer to use in class.